Hello and welcome back to Sorted Food. Now, as we recently mentioned, after nearly 10 years, our mate and chef, James, has decided to go and bag himself a better job. So, we thought, why not have one final epic chef versus chef, James versus Ben battle. Today, the chefs will be taking inspiration from the past 10 years of dishes they've experienced with Sorted, but never actually cooked. Now, victory for James would mean that he leaves the Sorted Food Kitchen as the best chef that Sorted has ever had, or ever will have, probably. Have to. <laughs> but if James loses, then we've all decided that he has to stay. Well, we Forever. Haven't. Yeah, we, we have. We have. We have. We, we have. They have. <laughs> Chefs, the Last Supper begins in three, two, one, battle. Can you microwave this for me? Okay, what is it? It's white chocolate. Okay, I did it. I'm blooming some gelatin. This going into water. I have opted for smoked guinea fowl on a charred corn risotto with fermented and pickled garlic buds. It's a throwback to our very, very first chef versus chef battle and an incredible dish that we had at Le Pigeon in Portland. I've got a whole bird and I'm gonna take the legs off they're going to be roasted on a tray with some leeks and some herbs in the oven. The breasts we'll need later on. And the carcass, I'm going to hack that up and then combine it with celery, carrot, garlic, bay leaves, peppercorns and onion. Plenty of water and that goes into our instant pot, which I'm going to cook at high pressure for about 45 minutes so we can get a stock out of all the flavour of the carcass. Have you noticed how much Evers is taking his frustration out on that bird? So I remember that trip to Portland being really quite foody and the kind of the, the places we were eating were incredible. It was all sort of farm to table-esque. But we'd just come off the back of a day of blindfold taste testing ice creams and trying to identify things. And then while you guys went and did your own thing, James and I treated ourselves to dinner at Le Pigeon. And it was just a moment we had and it was just brilliant food. I loved it. It is a moment we had. Oh, that's remember a really that? sentimental oh, so moment. Cute. And we couldn't choose what to order on the we menu, so we got four starters and shared them between us. I would have been devastated if Ben hadn't made a risotto in our <laughs> final <laughs> chef versus chef video. James, you've cooked more risottos in the last two years than I have. Yeah, you've done so three for the book, you've done six for meal packs. I haven't done a single one in two years. I've been developing for a midweek meal pack, not chef -y chef battles. Whoa! Whoa. Ouch. <laughs> <laughs> so Ebers is hitting us right in the sentimental area. Where are you taking us with your that. dish? That was, that's, that was <laughs> I'm doing Japan, or Japanese influence, because we all cooked dinner in Japan for lots of people. It was very intimidating. Uh, so I thought I'd kind of infuse some Japanese flavours into some Western flavours and give it a go. So I'm doing a toasted sesame and white chocolate mousse on poached rhubarb with nigori sake split with wasabi oil and a miso crumb. He's going to split it in a good way, because whenever I split things, he tells me it's bad. So. <laughs> it's in a good way. I think it's in a Mate, good I, way. In this video, talking about splitting, not a good thing. Okay, fine. <laughs> I'm going to start with my toasted sesame and white chocolate mousse. And to do that, I'm going to toast sesame seeds and bring milk up to a boil. And then I'm going to blitz those sesame seeds with a little bit of milk, add them to the boiling milk, along with bloomed gelatin. Then I'm going to whip up double cream, add the white chocolate and sesame seed mix to the double cream, and fold it in very gently. Betrayal? No, I think it's um, deceit. Deceit, yes. that's what it is. It smells like deceit. My bloomed gelatin <laughs> is going to go into my sesame mix. Oh, hang on, so there's a little aftertaste of abandonment as well. <laughs> yeah. White sesame and white chocolate mix with the gelatin in it, it's going to go through my whipped double cream. <laughs> Look, we've got the balloons, it's also time for a celebration. So I've got a nice Pinot Noir from Oregon, from the same place, and I thought not only is it perfect for me to reduce some down into a wonderful syrup, low tannin, nice and fruity, but we can also enjoy a glass because, James, you might not be allowed to drink in your new kitchen while you're cooking, but no a, rules here. It's a good point, actually. Very if you go into a professional kitchen, you're going to have to buck up your game. 
Yeah, that's the point. <laughs> oh, right, okay, that's it. <laughs> Cheers. 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 Oh, there's nothing I'd like better at 9.30 in the morning. Oh, nice, delicious. Mm. Oh, yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> Good morning. The great thing about Portland, Oregon in the summer when we were there was how bountiful all the fresh produce was. In the spring here in the UK, we've got some wonderful fresh produce. I'll come to that later. But corn is not there yet. But we've also learned that some things, frozen or tinned or canned, are just as good for quality and consistency. So I've opened a tin of sweet corn, I've drained it, and now I'm going to char it. It's a really long-winded way of saying I'm using sweet corn. <laughs> I'm transferring my white chocolate and sesame mousse into a round ring cutter. I'm also going to set it in a silicon mould and I'm going to decide which one to use because I'm not sure yet. It's going in the fridge for about an hour. I'm excited about this bit because this bit is also inspired by another video. It's um, the birthday cake crumb mix from the Milk Bar birthday cake that Ooh. I cooked for Ben. But instead of rainbow sprinkles, I'm doing miso. I'm going to mix together plain flour, caster sugar, brown sugar, baking powder, and then I'm going to pour in vegetable oil and miso paste, mix it all together, kind of crumble it over some baking paper, put it in the oven for 10 minutes. I'm reducing a large glass of wine down into a couple of tablespoons of really intense wine syrup. If you're going to do that, pick a red wine without too many tannins in it, or sort of low tannin, because that will concentrate as well. You want the fruitiness to come through and the natural sugars in the wine, more so than reduction of tannin. We've done a wine course. I want something really shiny and syrupy because it really is going to be the glaze at the end. So with a bit of like richness from stock that I reduce down to jus. And this will be the syrup which just glazes the plate. The rhubarb is super simple. I'm going to chop it up, chuck it in a saucepan with some sugar, mirin and water. Bring it up to boil and boil it for like four minutes with the lid on. For the wasabi oil, I'm going to blanch some spinach for 30 seconds. That's just for colour. That's going to go in a blender with oil and wasabi paste and just blend it for like a minute until it's very green. So with the legs of the fowl roasted and kind of braised in a way with the liquid and the tinfoil lid, I'm now picking off the meat, chopping it up, and I'm going to add fresh herbs, the wine reduction, season it to taste and create little bonbons that I'll quickly chill before panning. He's making chicken nuggets, isn't he? So I'm sure people are going to have questions about what's next for you. We have done a, a longer video where we sat down and had a chat around the table, but what does that next adventure look like? Well, off camera here, I have always been a development chef and I've just happened to join you guys on camera. Uh, so it's going to be much the same. I'm still going to be a development chef just for someone else. I just want to learn a bit of new stuff from other people. I'm not going to be head chef, so I've got someone to learn from who is above me, and I think that'll be really good. It's probably just hope for us all that it's still possible to get a job after all this rubbish. Well, even after this video. And this. James, it's Easter, you cheer us. And this. So Mike's is deceptively simple. And definitely this. Crepe Suzette, sorted. <laughs> <laughs> that, I'd forgotten about that one. <laughs> I forgot about my rhubarb while we were having a friendly chat. <laughs> oh no. Turns out you have learned something from our normals. <laughs> it's not an absolute disaster. It's just a little softer than I would have liked. I'm probably going to have to take that into account in the judging. Mm. Meanwhile, I'm going to sweat off the shallots in butter and oil. And once they're nice and soft, then I'll add garlic, herbs and bay leaves. It's a lot, isn't it? Mm. That's what Evan's ears look like after James said that he was getting a new job. <laughs> One thing we learn about pressure cookers is not to overfill them. I'm getting a little bit of splash back now. Once it's finished going, I'm going to strain it off. The stock is perfect for the risotto. The rest of it I'm going to reduce down into a wonderful, rich jus. Risotto rice going in, toasted in all of that buttery, oniony goodness. 
then a splash of white wine reduced by half and then bittered at a time with the guinea fowl stock. You must have learned a lot from each other over the last 10 years as well. Is there any standout things? My approach has always been, ever since the student cooking days, a little bit of cowboy, a little bit of bish bash bosh, let's get ourselves 90% of the way there as quick as possible with as few barriers. And that is my approach to most things in food, whereas James has a wonderful discipline of try, test, perfectionism that has absolutely changed everything we do. That's what I'll take from what you've left of a decade of fine-tuning everything we do. That's, really That's nice. so cute. I don't know where the cowboy analogy comes from. No, why why is it cowboy? <laughs> I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for Ebbers. He, he gave me the opportunity. I did know a few before that. Like, uh, you came back for a, a careers evening at university, and I sat there. Oh, I didn't know I this. I was in the audience, and you were the only person that I, I thought had done a great job. I was like, oh, you spill himself like the perfect company to just buy all the ingredients he wants, get all the equipment he wants, and just cook. It's amazing how in Ben's version of the story that he told to James all those years ago, that it was just Ben that had done that. A few weeks ago, I picked some wild garlic, and we talked about the advantages of frozen pellets of spinach. Only in season for a while, so I bought low. I literally filled up a rucksack full of it, got it home, washed it, blanched it, squeezed it into my own pellets, and now I've got wild garlic pellets in the freezer to use, and I'm going to use some of them in this dish. I also picked some wild garlic buds, and then I lacto-fermented them for a week, and then pickled them in cider vinegar. And what they are is a wonderful, almost caper-esque, like floral, citrusy, tangy thing that's going to just finish and garnish the plate. They're lovely. You couldn't do that in your new job. Take yeah. your shoes off the world, sir. Well, hopefully, wherever you're going, they're going to pay you better. You can buy some new shoes. Look at the bottom of them. <laughs> there are holes in them. They're just so comfortable, though. Don't close up on my shoes. There you go, James. Have a little. Well, I'm... let me I'll set you up a panne station. So, this dish all comes together the last few minutes, but the guinea fowl leg balls have now set up flour, egg, breadcrumb. Ah! They're oh. going to be fried. <laughs> Guinea fowl breasts, pan fried skin side down for most of the cooking. Then we'll turn them. Another couple of minutes. And then I'll get a gadge out. Finish the risotto by stirring through the corn, the wild garlic, and the pecorino. Stir it all through, season to taste. So, Ben, what badge are you going for today? <laughs> Taking a leaf out of your book, no, for guinea fowl badge. <laughs> no, <it's okay. laughs> Up with a squid. <laughs> So what is the deal with the Chef Skills Challenge now? Because there's going to be a, a, a gap of a chef. Well, you're not getting away that easy. I'm still going to judge you. I've still got plenty of badges up my sleeve I can hand out. But also, perhaps it's the opportunity to reach out to some top chefs around London, the actual skills, who can come and test you for real. And they won't be as nice as I am. There's no need to embarrass ourselves in front of real people. <laughs> Firm with a bounce. You don't want to over dry it, but unlike a lot of game, you don't want to serve it underdone. So it's not gamey in the sense you can serve it pink. You do want to cook it through, like chicken, but you don't want to dry it out. What sake are you going for, James? Oh, yes. I love this. It's the most sake I like. I'm filtered. Right, team, two minutes left. Oh! 30 seconds. 10, nine, Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Stop cooking forever. Well, until he comes back. Do you want to say it one last time? Are we going to put them through the sexies? Is that why? Sexies. <laughs> Hello, I'm gate crashing. Oh, hi. Oh, hello. <laughs> I'm coming to the party. Nice if you could join us. That's why I threw a few extra nugs on. Oh, thanks, mate. Should we just dig straight in? Yeah. For the purposes of judging, we now have to set aside any sentimentality. This is just chef versus chef, 
base it on what's in front of us. Cheers. Just imagine it's a little bit warmer. Cheers. Cheers. Well, that wild garlic, bud. Yeah, the wild garlic's great. I'll tell you what this dish is missing. It's a knife, isn't it? <laughs> that is a very tasty risotto. And I love the fresh pop of mm -hmm. corn in there as well. All that risotto practice has paid off and you brought it all out <laughs> for my final battle. And it's delicious. Those nugs as well, mm, the nugs really, good. really tasty. Really good. Well played, Heathers. It's good. Now, do you want to put some spinach over your dessert? Yeah. Um, as usual, I'm not 100% sure what this is, or how to tell you about it, but it's a white chocolate and sesame mousse with some miso crumb and rhubarb. He's made it look chefy. Like, you know those oily little... Mm. Mm. Yeah. Oh, I don't even know what that is, and I don't know how to do it. Like when you do oil and vinegar and you dip bread into it, but it never goes together. No. Yeah. 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 Like exactly that. like that. Exactly like that. <laughs> don't go. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, now that I've portioned it, it looks pretty horrific, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Good luck, everyone. Wait, 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 I've also wait, wait, wait. done yeah. an Ebers and oh. served some alcohol with it. Campai. Because Campai. that does Campai. well. Campai. Campai. Oh, that's oh. delicious. Oh, we're back, we're back. Oh, that, that is, is a good, good one. isn't it? For the last time in a while, James, cheers. 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 Ooh. It's one of those dishes you can't help but smirk at. Yeah, that is Because you sort of go, why does that work? How does that work? But boy, does it work. That is absolutely stunningly delicious. The pickled ginger is the bit right at the end. Because you get like almost a, a really sweetness, then the candied stuff from the crumb, then the sesame kicks in and it's going all savory and then really salty because of the miso and then suddenly you just get hit by a warmth of ginger and wasabi. And it's kind of like, just clever. Yeah, yeah. You've both given us a really hard decision to make. Mm. I want to thank Gary and I'm going back for more of this. It didn't take long for us to decide. For us, there's a standout genius plate in front of us. Um, it's complex, it's delicious. It's James Curry. Thank you. Is it just because I'm leaving? Would you agree? I would 100% agree. That, that was Because yet again, it's something that you just needs thinking outside the box and then delivering them. Thanks, guys. That's not anywhere near the box, though. That's what, <laughs> that's what gets me. Like, there's thinking outside of the box, and then over here, there's Barry, and then all the way over there is that dish. Yeah, absolutely amazing. Well, for one last time, Kampai. James. Kampai, mate. Kampai. For now. Thank you and thank you. Thank Cheers. you. Cheers. So when he does come back, yep. what's your predictions on the size of the arms? Are they going to get bigger after he's gone or, or smaller? Come on. Let's keep it to food. Yeah, I am. Well, presumably um, at the end of the <laughs> 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 oh, That was weird. <laughs>